Hi everyone, welcome back to my video on education series. In this video, I'm going to show how do we use the newton robson method to solve a non-linear equations as such. But to be honest, to solve is not a correct term to use, simply because by using this method, we wouldn't be able to accurately know all the solutions, but rather we are just be able to identify one of the roots. The graph provided here shows how the equation actually looks like. And you can see that actually there are three solutions here. And in this example, we are going to find just one of it. So say this one. So first of all, you will see that actually you have the n terms and also the n plus one terms. This simply means that the newton robson method is actually an iterative method. You are going to repeat these equations for many many times okay, until you find that your xn plus 1, the next iterated solution is actually approximately equal to xn, depending on your criteria. xn is actually your current existing solution, while xn plus 1 you will be so-called the better solutions or the next iterated solutions which you are going to use in the next iterations. And then these iterations continues to find the next one okay, by using xn minus the function on the existing solution divided by the first derivative of the function work on xn as well. For this example, okay, we are interested to find t and if the t here is been now replaced with the xn, so basically the function of the xn will be xn squared plus 2xn exponential negative xn minus 4xn, while the first derivative will be 2xn plus 2 exponential negative xn minus 2xn exponential negative xn minus 4. For this dem demonstration here, I'll be working out this table using Excel, but you can actually do it pretty easily using calculator. The first choice that I'm going to make for my xn will be 5. This is just a simply a random number that I choose, okay, in the hope that this number is actually quite close to the actual solutions. For the newton robson method, the closer that you pick your first choice as compared to the actual solution, then you are going to suffer less iterations, okay, for your computation. And of course, since we have already explained that in actual, okay, there will be at least three solutions that we can see here. That means your first choice will also be affecting the performance that you might be ending up with the different solutions depending on the choice that you make. The first row that you see here will be actually the product that has after computing all the x, uh, fxn, f'xn, and then this will be the next sample. And I'm going to repeat this computation for the next iterations. Since there is still a significant difference between the xn and xn plus 1, so this will not be the solution, so I will have to continue for the next iteration. So you can observe now that your xn is actually starting to get closer to xn plus 1. And if let's say we set now our criteria, if both values are actually the same, okay, at two decimal places. So at the fourth iteration, we found that actually our solution has been quite acceptable, simply because that at the two decimal places, 3.96, basically xn and xn plus one are the same. And then you can also observe that this value at fxn, it should be very, very small, which is close to zero. So we can say now our solution are now will be acceptable, whereas our t here will be actually equal to 3.96. So let's say if you are not satisfied with the accuracy, you can actually continue to calculate. And you can pretty much confirm that 3.961948 will be your solution because it has been repeated in quite a number of columns of the xn and xn plus 1 
and then the most important evidence here is that your fxn is exactly equals to zero so this will imply that you have found the solution one of the solution so now let's say we change the initial starting value and see what happened now we change it to one and you can see that now the solution will be converged to actually zero which is our another solution right here and if we further change to other values let's say minus two and you will now see that the solution has now converged to a different value which is exactly this point all right that's all that i want to show for the newton robson method however let's say your aim is just to find the solutions without going through all this you can actually make use of the calculator to do so so what you can do here is just to enter the functions in terms of x okay into the calculator and use shift soft then you'll be able to find out the answer so let's do it now so the first thing that we do here is to enter the function in terms of x like this so the next thing to do here is to press shift soft and we ask for the initial value to be placed here pretty much similar to how you actually decide the initial value okay for the newton robson method so let's say we want to find out our solutions okay that starts with the initial value of 5 so we can actually hit 5 and then press equals enter and then shift soft again now you'll be given the first solution correspond to an initial value or initial starting point of 5 and we can repeat this again with a different start point example 1 that we have to choose then shift soft again so this time you give us the 0 and now we try with the minus 2 so shift soft minus 2 and then shift soft so now we'll be able to give us the third solutions negative 0 0.895 the same one that we have calculated here all right that's all that i want to show in this video hope it helps you in some way okay thank you very much for watching bye bye